Guys, it's Traveling Agronomist. We're back in Enid, Oklahoma at our plot, and we're gonna be taking a look at where we've put up our signs, take a look at all the different hybrids, but more importantly, we were here just a week ago, and since then, we've had an explosion of sugarcane aphids. We've already treated them, and they're already starting to be suppressed. So let's take a look at all the crazy stuff that's going on in this plot, and uh, hopefully we'll learn something. Our first stop is right here in our first uh, set of hybrids. This is our, what I call our conventional hybrid block. This is a block of hybrids that includes aphid tolerant as well as just our traditional grain sorghum hybrids. But what's really interesting is that since we had the explosion of SCA in this field, you can really see that difference in our tolerant hybrids and our susceptible hybrids. We are right here in front of one of our aphid tolerant hybrids the 3189. Been a great product for us this year, but right next to it, we have a block of our non aphid hybrid. And we can, non aphix hybrid. And what we can see is just a tremendous, tremendous amount of black sooty mold forming on the leaf. Overall, just this is a very sticky, sticky substance when it's active in their feeding. What we have done to suppress these is we have run the center pivot to avoid having to spray these because we have some forage products. So we ran the center pivot with some insecticide. And as you can see, we are seeing great suppression of our sugarcane aphids that we had just only four or five days ago. And that suppression that we're, we're getting is just really key. This is the most vulnerable time our sorghum will have for sugarcane aphid. And the reason for that is that the honeydew, that black substance that's forming that, helping form that mold is a very sticky, high sugar content substance. And what that acts like is a glue going through the combine. And if that's present, you're going to have a lot of issues harvesting. When we walk through an aphid tolerant hybrid, we do see a little bit of the, the, the honeydew formation, but we really see just overall cleaner leaves, less sticky substance, and just an overall healthier plant. Now, aphid tolerance is a great attribute to build a great hybrid. We can see it in our 1203 that's right here. Very clean leaves all the way through. And even next to it, the 1301. Both of these are aphid tolerant hybrids. Very clean leaves, great canopy health. And when you compare it to our check that's over here on the, behind us, we can see a lot more aphid pressure and just overall just a lot of potential damage. Luckily, we've controlled it, but we can see that that, that uh, mold and that honeydew is all over these leaves. Now, what we have here is a block that we've set up just for aphid tolerant comparisons. We have on the far end, the 3189, which is the fullest season aphids hybrid for the US market. Then we have the 1203, which is the industry leader in yield as well as in aphid tolerance. We get into the high plains hybrids. Since we're in Oklahoma, we're taking a look at these, the 1301, the 1153, which is a new product for our lineup, and then we have the 1329 and the 1201. That gives us a lot of variety in how we select a hybrid. We have everything from a 60 day to mid bloom, very quick double crop type uh, system, all the way to the full season. So when we're evaluating hybrids and we're building a portfolio, it's really important to have options and our growers need to incorporate that. The 1329 and 1301 are by far probably my favorite hybrids in this group and one of the reasons for that is I just love this grain color this this unique whitish classified as a cream grain just overall just just a beautiful crop to look at we can see a great plant health 
Now the purpose for that grain color can, can mean a lot of different things to different people. But one of the most important aspects of it is when we get towards a white grain and a tan colored plant, we can start using that for food. And food grade crops are used all around the world, predominantly in Africa, the Middle East, and even here in the United States. They can be used to make baked goods, cereals, um, and any kind of, we always use it for animal feed, but any kind of human consumption tends to be a white grain because of the way it actually needs and, and ultimately turns into a finished product. It's a very clean, white, beautiful flower uh, that they can produce from grain that is of that color and of that quality. So we deal with a lot of pests out here. We've talked about sugarcane aphid. We've talked about uh, stink bugs in the past, wet worms, uh, army worms, all the different lepidopteran pests. But one of the biggest pests we have in this plot is actually walks on four legs. We have hoof prints all around our plots. And what that is, is it's deer. And as you can see, the deer just love border rows. They love this edge row. They can walk, they can nibble, and they can just clean out a, uh, a plot. Thankfully, we plant more than one row to eliminate border uh, effects. But this is just one of the strange things that you'll see as an agronomist where you're looking for some small insect that is causing all this damage, and it turns out it's one of the biggest ones around. It's a nice sized deer so thankfully he didn't eat us out of house and home we still got a good plot to look at we're gonna finish cleaning up we're gonna fly the drone here in a second get some good footage and then we're gonna head up the road we got a busy week we have been on the road since this weekend we're gonna see Oklahoma Kansas we're gonna come back to Oklahoma see some more and then we're gonna head back to Texas and then we're going home and then guess what we'll be back to Kansas again so stay tuned, we're going to see a lot more. 